Welcome back, everybody, to another deep dive. Um, today, we're going to be talking about The Quiet Man and more specifically, the music. Mm. And I, I think we both agree it's a classic film. Absolutely a classic. Especially, I think, for us as Irish Americans. Yeah. But we're not just going to talk about the movie itself. We're going to dive deep into the music yeah. and how Victor Young's score doesn't just sit there in the background. Right. It really is a character in and of itself. It really is. You're absolutely right. The score is way more than just background music. Mm -hmm. It really does amplify the emotions, the humor, and the drama. It's like a hidden narrator whispering in your ear as you're watching. Hmm. So tell me about that hidden narrator idea. How does Young's score actually achieve that? Well, what's really fascinating is how Young uses these very specific musical motifs to represent different elements of the story. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when Sean Thornton first arrives in Innisfree, the music is very light and airy, full of flutes and whistles. I love that part. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. It reflects that idyllic beauty of the Irish countryside. But as tensions rise, the score shifts. Mm. It incorporates darker, more dramatic strings and brass. Mm -hmm. It starts to mirror that escalating conflict. So it's like the music is giving us clues, foreshadowing what's to come. Exactly. Yeah. And Young was a true master at using those musical cues to really deepen our understanding of each of the characters. Mm. Take Sean Thornton, for example. He's this guy obviously haunted by his past. Right. And you hear that in the score. The score reflects his inner turmoil with these beautiful, but also melancholic recurring motifs. And it's like we're hearing his unspoken thoughts yeah. and his emotions through the music. And, you know, I've always loved how the music in The Quiet Man, it just feels so authentically Irish. Yes. You know, it's not just some generic Celtic sound that we hear in so many films when they need something that sounds vaguely Irish. Right, it's not that stereotypical Hollywood oh. Celtic music sound. Exactly. So how did Young achieve that? Well, he went beyond the typical Hollywood orchestra setup. You know, he incorporated traditional Irish instruments, yeah. the fiddle, the bodran, yeah. giving the score that really genuine Celtic flavor. Yeah. And he didn't just throw them in there randomly. He understood how these instruments are used in traditional Irish music, and he wove them seamlessly into the score. I think, for me, the use of the harp is especially powerful yes. because it's this ancient instrument with so much history and folklore behind it. Right. It's like it's adding another layer of storytelling to the film. I completely agree. The harp, in a lot of ways, is associated with Irish mythology and storytelling. Yes. So when you hear it, you get this sense of Ireland's rich cultural heritage right and then you have the fiddle which can be both joyful and mournful right so it really captures that full range of emotions in the film like a musical conversation between tradition and modernity yes between ireland's past and present and speaking of which this whole deep dive is making me really want to experience ireland firsthand you know i'm a sucker for a good travel adventure yeah. and the love ireland newsletter actually had some great insights that tie in perfectly with our conversation here oh absolutely <laughs> The newsletter's recent feature on County Mayo, where they filmed The Quiet Man, was just fantastic. Yeah. It really paints a vivid picture of that region. I mean, it's like stepping back in time, you know, with those rolling green hills and those charming villages and the wild Atlantic coast. Yeah. Beautiful. It makes you realize that the film wasn't just using Ireland as a backdrop. Right. The landscape itself is a character. Yes. Shaping the mood and the story. Exactly. And the Love Ireland folks... They really delves into some interesting aspects of Irish culture, like the pub scene, which is so central to the film. Oh, yeah. Did you read that section about snugs? Oh, of course. Yeah. These little cozy booths. Yes. Tucked away, perfect for a private conversation or a romantic rendezvous. It's so charming. I love that. It really speaks to the warmth and hospitality of Irish culture. Yeah. That idea that the pub is more than just a place to have a drink. Yeah. You know? It's a community gathering spot, a place where stories are shared and friendships are forged. And The Quiet Man really captures that. It's so many pivotal scenes happen in that village pub. From Sean Thornton's first encounter with the locals to the hilarious brawl with Will Danaher. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. It's like this microcosm of Irish society, you know, this stage where all these personalities and conflicts are playing out. Exactly. And just like the music, it adds that layer of authenticity and richness to the story. It really does. It's amazing how... The film, the music, and the real-life culture all kind of intertwine to create this really immersive experience. Yeah, it really is. It makes you wonder, you know, if the music can transport you to another place so vividly, what would it be like to actually stand in those locations? 
to hear the sounds of the village, yeah. the wind whistling through the hills, maybe even catch a live fiddle tune in a traditional pub. Makes you want to go there, doesn't it? Yeah, absolutely. But going back to the film score, there's one thing that always gets me. The way the music handles those quieter, more introspective moments. Uh -huh. It's not all just, you know, rousing jigs and reels. Right. You're right. Yeah. And that's really where Victor Young's genius shines through, I think. He understood that sometimes the most powerful moments are the quiet ones. Right. So take, for instance, those scenes where Sean Thornton is wrestling with his demons. Right. Grappling with his past. The music there becomes almost contemplative. Mm. He uses these very sparse, almost mournful melodies, mm -hmm. often featuring a solo oboe or flute. Yeah, it's like the music is giving us a glimpse into his soul, expressing the emotions he can't put into words. Exactly. Yeah. And it's in those moments that the line between the film's world and our own emotions as viewers, it really starts to blur. Mm. We're not just watching a character anymore. Right. We're actually feeling his pain, his longing, his hope. That's what makes The Quiet Man more than just a romantic comedy. Yes. It's a story about redemption, about finding peace with yourself. Absolutely. Speaking of finding peace, remember that story from the Love Ireland newsletter <laughs> about Jim Gallagher finding his grandfather's boyhood home? Oh, yeah. That was such a great story. It's like a real-life echo of Sean Thornton rediscovering his roots. It is, isn't it? Except without all the drama and fisticuffs. Exactly. It speaks to that universal human desire to connect with our past, yeah, to understand where we come from. And it makes me think that a trip to Ireland could be more than just sightseeing. Mm. It could be a real journey of self-discovery. I love that idea. Imagine walking those same roads, breathing that same air. Yes. Feeling that connection to history and heritage. And what better way to prepare for a journey like that than by immersing yourself in the music that captures the very essence of that place? Yeah. You know, the Quiet Man soundtrack isn't just entertainment. Right. It's like a sonic guidebook, preparing your heart and mind for the experience. It's like having a musical map leading you to all these hidden corners of Ireland. Yes. Whispering stories of the people and the land. And speaking of maps, I was checking out the Love Ireland newsletter again, and they had some fantastic recommendations for places to visit in County Roscommon. Oh, yes. Which is right next to County Mayo. Ah, County Roscommon. It's often overlooked by tourists. But it really is a hidden gem full of ancient history, unspoiled landscapes, yeah. and just that quintessential Irish charm. It's, they say, sometimes the best adventures are found off the beaten path. Exactly. Yeah. And wouldn't it be amazing to experience those places with the music of the quiet man echoing in your mind? Yeah. Like bringing the film to life. Right. Blending yeah. fiction and reality into this really unique and personal journey. Now, that's an adventure I can get behind. And, you know, as we've been talking, I've been thinking about how music has this power to connect us to places, to cultures, to emotions. Right. It's like this universal language that goes beyond words. It really is. Yeah. And it makes me wonder what other film soundtracks have that ability mm. you know, to transport you, to wow. make you yearn for a particular destination. Ooh, that's a good question. I bet our listener has a few favorites in mind. I'm sure they do. But we'll save that discussion for another deep dive. For now, let's just focus on how the Quiet Man soundtrack has set the stage for this incredible Irish adventure. Yes. Both real and imagined. Yeah, I think that's a perfect note to end on. It's not just about the music. Right. It's about the emotions it evokes, the memories it stirs, yeah. and the journeys it inspires. Yeah, it really is something special. You know, it makes you appreciate just the magic of a well-crafted film score. Right. It's like the music becomes this invisible thread, uh -huh. you know, connecting all these different elements, the story, the characters, the emotions, and even the setting. Absolutely. Yeah. And when you have a score like Victor Young's, which is so deeply intertwined with the heart and soul of Ireland, it's almost impossible to separate the music from the place itself. It really is. You know, it's like the music is a distillation of the Irish spirit. The joy, the melancholy, the resilience, that deep connection to the land and its history. Yeah, and that's why even if you've never set foot in Ireland, you can listen to the Quiet Man soundtrack. Oh, and it, it'll evoke such a strong sense of place. Totally. You can practically smell the peat fires, yeah. feel that mist on your face, mm -hmm. hear the laughter echoing in a cozy pub. Speaking of pubs, I'm reminded of that Love Ireland newsletter article about the tradition of snugs and Irish pubs. Ah, yes, those intimate little booths. <laughs> Tucked away from the hustle and bustle of the main bar. Yeah. Designed for quiet conversation and maybe a shared pint or two. They just sound so inviting. Cold like a little pocket of warmth and intimacy. Yeah. You know, within that larger, more boisterous setting. It's a perfect example of how Irish culture values 
both community and individual connection. Right. So you can be part of the larger group in the pub, but yeah. you also have that space to retreat to and connect on a more personal level. It's like a metaphor for Ireland itself. Yes. You know, a place where you can find